this morning to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Jesus, amen. First Corinthians 13. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm just going to read the last verse. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word of God this morning. We thank you that the word is true. And it's working in our lives. Father, right now I, I plead the blood over this service. I pray right now for against any hindrance. Father, right now against any demon that would try to hinder this service. Father, I take dominion and authority over every foul spirit. And Father, Lord, I loose the anointing of God right now that brings change to the hearts and lives of your people. Holy Spirit, have your free reign in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm going to talk this morning. I'm going to title this, Sister Alex. Love, the distinguishing factor. God gave me that. Love, the distinguishing factor. Amen. And I was looking it up earlier, what the distinguish, distinguish means. And, and I, don't, I didn't write it down, but I think it, it said that it meant... A characteristic that showed that you were something, amen? It showed that you belonged to something or someone, but it's something that people can look and see something in your life and know that you did, that, that you belong to an organization, or if I walk, Gerald walks in to church, right? You look at the distinguishing factor on him, and what is it? Broncos, you look at Sister Cindy, what do you see? The Broncos, you look at Pastor Sue, that's orange, what do you see? Orange, orange, not the Broncos, an orange suit, the Lahana Tigers, the, ba the Bengals. <laughs> but the distinguishing factor of a Christian, how many claim to be a Christian this morning? Can I see your hands? You literally claim, I am a Christian this morning, amen, and I, I, I uh, uh, have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Listen, let me tell you guys something. Those of you that didn't lift your hand, I just want to mention this. This is Bible right here. He said, if you'll be ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. So be careful, amen, if you are a Christian, that you're always giving him praise. Even if it is a simple, lift your hand and, and say that you're a Christian this morning, amen. Because there's coming a day when Jesus is going to come and he's going to say, who's on your team? Which one of these are your people? And he's going to look at some. He's going to say, and they're going to say, if they're yours, lift your hand. And Jesus is going to say, they, they, they denied me. Could you imagine if we deny him in church? You with me? Could you imagine something as simple as that? Somebody asks you if you're a Christian and you give that haphazard answer. Could you imagine one day standing before God on that judgment day and he, de he denies you as his daughter or his son? Be careful in your life. You with me? That's one area right there you can't play with. You're either a Christian or you're not. You know what's a trip? You know what's a, what's, what, really, what really burdens our hearts as pastors, especially my wife, because she works with the youth? Is that the youth are saying they're not Christians. And they're saying they know they're going to hell. And they're saying they do not care. These are some of the kids from your house that are saying they know they're going to hell. And I, I understand that there's some folly. And I understand that there's some, uh, 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 you know what I mean, rebellion. And I understand all that. But when it comes to denouncing Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when it comes to saying you do not care whether you go to heaven or not, just because you're rebellious, you're making a very, very grave statement there, brother. 
or sister, whoever you are. You with me? Because, you know what I mean? To serve Jesus Christ is the utmost honor that you could ever have in your life. And just remember that when you deny Christ, one of these days, He'll deny you. You with me? And, and I, I know none of you would ever want. Because I know maybe you're playing a game, you think you're cool, and you're doing all that right now. But you will stand before the judgment seat of God. And there is a heaven, and there is a burning hell. We went to that chili fest the other night. We were walking by the, the, the roasters one, and them flames, brother, were coming out at night, probably eight feet high, 10 feet high. And you look into it, brother, I'm telling you, I look into that fire, I could see souls crying out from hell. And I said, look into that fire, you could see the souls of men crying out from hell. And you know what I mean? It was wicked, brother. And I said, you know what, we don't believe in hell. And I pray, if you don't, that God would give you a dream, that God would give you a taste of what hell will be like. Just give you a taste, just 30 seconds a taste of hell, just to scare the hell right out of you. Because I'm telling you today, whether you believe it or not, there is a heaven and there is a hell. And you're going either place. You with me? And the only way to get to heaven is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Come on, church. Come on now. You with me? And to serve Him and live for Him every day of your life as best as you can. You with me? Remember, it's so important. This is heavy duty. You know what I mean? We Listen, church, we can't play. You know what I mean? We can't play games and we can't act like it don't matter. Some of you need to warn your children. You're on your way to hell and you need to pray and cry out to God for their souls because they're literally going to hell. We can't look at them and just say, oh, you know, well, there's nothing I can do. I thank God that my family before I was saved didn't have that kind of attitude like the church has today. There's nothing I can do about it. I would thank God that there was people who knew how to pray and how to get on their knees and how to cry out to God and pray in the Holy Ghost until they got something from God for me. I thank God that the attitude is not like today of the church when it, back in, 19, in the mid-1980s. Because today, man, we're so lukewarm. You don't even understand it. You might be sitting here today and you're lukewarm in your heart. And God said, listen, what did He say He'll do to you? He said, you either be hot on fire for me or you be cold and go sin and be a pagan, but don't play with God. He'll spit you out of your mouth, out of His mouth. You don't want to do that. Come on, church. For some of you, this is a warning this morning. Some of you, you think maybe because you're young, you're going to live forever. you got your plans of where you're going to go to school, college, military, or just hang out at mom's and be a bum all your life. But you still have your plans. And I'm telling you what, today, life is so precious. And you better take advantage of it while you have the opportunity. You with me? You better, now that you're young, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and live for Him. Listen, all them friends and all them people that you know, family, friends at school, they're all going to parties, they're all having sex, they're all doing all that stuff, and you're envying them. Listen, when they're burning in hell, and their skin is melting off, and they're crying out for God to have mercy, and there is no more mercy in hell, then I wonder what you're going to say. I want to be like them? Come on, church. What about you, Christian? What about you who claim that you're a Christian and sit up in church every Sunday morning and you end up in hell one day because you lived your life for yourself? You played the game. You thought you were cool. You, were, you thought you were a Christian, but really you were lukewarm. And your pastor would come and he'd preach. How many services, how many messages have you heard pastor preach and scream and yell out of his voice and warn you and you're going to hear it for eternity as the flames of hell burn your flesh up and you're going to weep and gnash in your teeth and they said that's when you're going to remember my voice preaching to you and telling you and you sat there and said whatever and for eternity the weeping and gnashing of teeth 
is you remembering pastor gave me an opportunity to be saved pastor susan preached to me she told me about esau selling his birthright for for a soup she told me about him losing the the blessing of the first son she told me all this stuff she cried and she wept you you don't even know it when she goes home and weeps for your soul maybe your parents don't even weep for you and your pastor does right. your parents have already had enough they're already hard in their own heart and they don't even weep for you guys anymore but your pastor susan goes home and she goes and pray and she's weeping and crying because you guys are so stubborn in your hearts you don't even see it you think it's a game you're messing around you're playing with god you're playing with fire when you play with fire and you will be burned Mm, this is good stuff. Some of you need the fire of hell to, to wake you up. You need the fire of hell to burn you a little bit to wake you up. I remember one time my sister was talking about there is no hell and this and that. And my other sister is a Christian and she went and she turned the gas stove on and the flame was up and she grabbed her hand and she put it by the fire. What are you doing? What are you doing? You want to feel what hell's like, she told her. She put her hand by the fire. She said, put your hand on that and see what hell, hell will be like. There is a hell. And many, many, many millions of people are there today. Because then you know what the sad thing is? Is that a lot of them sat in church, just like some of you this morning. I don't know if you understand that there's teenagers in hell today. There's teenagers, and some of you know them, that have been to your high school and died drunk. They've died high. They've committed suicide, and they're in hell today, burning for eternity. And, 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 and I think we forget it. I think it was I think it was your son that that was going to church going to school with a girl that died of cancer or something remember yeah. and, and, and and he was he was, it, it touched him it it freaked him out to know that one of the girls in his class died of cancer you know what I mean but it only lasts for a moment yeah. 911 uh, 911 the, the the towers were bombed they were they were hit with planes they were attacked in the United States and for what a week our nation turned and prayed come on church this ain't even my message this morning but I think sometimes God's gets sick and tired of us the church that made God sick was the church that played games with God if you want to sin don't come to church if you want to sin go to the bar go get you some crack go lay down with every boy every girl and go sin until your heart's content and then you come back all jacked up tore up messed up beat up skin falling off stds all this stuff and then cry and see if god will have mercy on your soul wow. The Bible says that Esau sold his, 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 the, the, the birthright. That he sold it for a bowl of soup because he said, it don't matter to me. Yeah. Here, you can have my birthright. I want some soup. All I can think about is right now I'm hungry. Yeah. Right now I'm feeling these desires and I want a woman right now. I don't care less about my salvation. I don't care about anything. Just feed me now. I want what you got right now. And the Bible says, that when Esau come to his senses and, re and understood what he had done, that he wept bitterly and said, God, please give me something else. And God said, nah, there's nothing left for you, Esau. And although he wept bitterly, he was not, he, he did not receive that forgiveness. He did not receive, you with me, that pardon from God because he, to he took it with, 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 with the grain of soul. It didn't matter to him. And some of you, you think this is a game because we come to church, you think we're foolish, you think we're punks. You think we're, come on, you think we're stupid because we come in here and pray over your souls? Because we read our Bible and we allow God to break us and mold us and make us what He wants us to be instead of what we wanted to. I'm telling you, some of you youth in this place, you would have been abandoned, you would have been battered, you would have been sexually molested if it hadn't been for God changing your family. If it hadn't been for God saving your mother or your father or your parents, whoever it is. You ought to thank God today. I pray the fear of God in your heart today. 
I pray that God would convict you so bad you toss and turn in your bed, in your sweat, feeling the flames of hell reaching up around you, show you this ain't no game. We're not stupid. We're not idiots. We're not here with no brain being stupid, let up reading a book. And, and, and practicing love and, and, and forgiving others who have harmed us? Oh, you're stupid. No, you're stupid. You're the one that's not thinking right. You're the one that's out of your mind, not us. We're, we love Jesus. I don't know if you guys came here today. I don't know what you Christians have come here to do. Even if you are a Christian this morning, Come to look at a preacher, come to hear another message, come to play games and go to church because it makes you feel better or because you have to do it? Why do you keep coming if you're not going to let God change you? Come on, church. Why do you keep serving Him? One lady said it like this, either love Him or leave my Jesus alone because He's no punk. And he's no puppet that you can come and play with and come to the altar when you feel like it, when you're all jacked up because you were out there fulfilling the lust of your own flesh. Then you come back and trample all over the blood of Jesus Christ because you wanted to have fun. I'm telling you that there's going to be one day that you're not going to know that's going to be too late for you. And then flames of hell will wrap you in their arms and they'll, they'll pull you away from the presence of God and God will just wave you away and say, depart from me, you who worked iniquity. You stand before God acting like you're all that in a bag of chips and God will shun you away and say, get out of my presence. You lived your life the way you wanted to. You lived for iniquity and for that secret sin. Get out of my sight. Love the distinguishing factor. We read scriptures like John 3.16, For God so loved the world. How many of you know it? Every one of you know it. That He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God's will is for you to live with Him forever, but God is no fool, church. Whatsoever a man sows, whatsoever a woman sows, that shall you also reap. Don't think because you're a Christian, you can go out and live a sinful life and run back to the altar and repent. And God's just going to just, you know what, that's all right. I understand. There's, there's seeds you sow, and you're going to reap something, man of God. You're going to reap something, woman of God. You can't just do whatever you want to do. If you're going to do that, why don't you go to the world? But don't play with God. Right. See, God gave His only begotten Son. He tortured Him, brother. He allowed Him to be tortured and tormented so bad. He, he not only physically, but emotionally. He didn't die because they, they killed Him on a cross. He died because of a broken heart for you. Right. He could see into eternity those who would come like Judas and betray Him. He said, yet not all of you are clean when he washed their feet, right? He said, there's one of you that ain't clean. God knows our hearts. And we're right there with the ministry, and we're right there, and we're deceivers, man. Dipping in the money. And you say, I don't dip, I didn't steal for Yes, you did. You stole God's tithes. Come on now. Huh? Dipping over there with the... Wanting the blessing, say, Pastor, pray for me. Come on now, anoint me with oil, lay hands on me, I don't feel good. Come visit me in hospital, in jail. Come and do all this, and then you go home and talk about us. Yeah. Dipping with us, and then turning on us. You think Jesus is dumb? He don't know, I might not know, but he does. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. He loved you so much, he gave his son. You with me? That love. Some of you got to understand it. Parents, if anybody needs to understand it, you do. I don't know what kind of love you guys understand, but you got to understand how many people are in hell today, and God loved them. 
And some of you, you listen, you need to warn your children, you need to warn your families, and you need to tell them about hell. And when they die, and if they eventually go there, listen, you need to tell them, you know what, I loved you, weep at their funeral, and let it go. Tell them you had a chance. God loved them people in hell, and he still sent them there when they did wrong. Or they, he didn't send them there, they sent themselves there. Because they didn't believe, they didn't want to serve the Lord. And I'm telling you today, all you can do is tell them. But if you're holding, you're that watchman on the wall. You're the one that God saves and He puts you as a man or a woman of prayer. And He sets you apart and you're all these things He says you are. And you're over there, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't change them and I can't make them. When's the last time you fasted over your family? Not more than one meal. You with me? When's the time you wept bitterly over your children? I can guarantee you mama's in here. If they called right now and said your son was murdered last night, I can hear the screams from your voices. I can hear you fathers weeping over your children and lamenting over their caskets. But you don't believe that they're going to die. You don't believe. If you believe that they maybe you're on their way to hell, you'd weep and lament now. Right. Don't even shed a tear for our children. Not even a tear. Nothing comes out. Nothing's in here. We don't even warn them. We don't even tell them. We give them money. We give them rides. We bless them. And we're the culprits that are financing their party yeah. all the way to hell. Right. We're the ones taking them to the parties. We're the ones giving them money. I talked to a young man just the other day right across the street. feels guilty. He says, I've been, I feel guilty for you. I haven't been able to eat. Three, I'm, I'm having anxiety. I'm doing all this. And I said, brother, and I tried to minister. And he goes, well, you don't understand. I'm the one that gave my brother the money for the drugs he overdosed on. And he's dead and in hell today. And it's my fault. How do you go against that? I mean, you don't even understand some of the stuff you give in your children. Some of the some of the some of the leniency and the oh the great love that you have for him, you just overlook. Say, I'm not looking at their sin. I'm not even gonna you see him right there high in front of you, you see him all drunk in front of you, and you still hear how much he thought, how much you need. And you're sending your children to hell. And then when they die, you're going to reap, and you're going you're to wail, and you're going to lament, and God's going to tell you, you shut your mouth. Yeah. I don't remember if it was the sons of Aaron or the sons of Eli, where God, they come into the church, and the thing is, is our kids are coming into the church, and they're offering strange fire. I don't have any idea why they even come if they want to serve the devil. But they're offering a strange fire. They, I don't know what it is they're offering in the church, playing like they're Christians on the, these days and the rest. They're living like the devil. But God is tired of that. And God consumed the man's two boys. He said, I'm going to kill them if you don't straighten them out. They were grown men. And God required the father, deal with your boys. Deal with them. We see them acting a fool. We see them throwing fit. They'll even cuss at you, call you bees, slap you in the face. They'll do all this stuff. And you still think the love of God is to continue to bless them? The greatest love was when the prodigal son, his daddy, told his son, listen, man, you know what I mean? This is your inheritance. This is what you get from God. I can't withhold this from you. It's like your dad or their dad sending them money that's not yours. You can't keep that. That's theirs. But he sent him away and said, don't come back until you've changed, man. I love you so much. He probably wept with them. And he said, you know what? But from this point on, literally you're dead to me. He didn't have a phone card. He didn't have a cell phone. He didn't have a bus ticket home. He didn't have anything like that. Daddy didn't do anything for him. Only thing dad did was every day go to the edge of the, of the fence and look for his son, saying, you know what, God, save my boy out there somewhere, God. But I'm not going to finance his way to hell. 
And after he had spent all his money on prostitutes and drunkenness, and you know what your kids are doing out there. Don't act stupid. Yeah. And we still don't say nothing. You want something to eat? Come pick me up in the middle of the night. I didn't take you there. You walk home if you want to come home. Oh, no, I can't do that because I love them. No, man, you don't even know what love is because one day God will separate many, many people because he loves them. See, he's a merciful God, but he's also a just God. You guys don't understand that. Pastor's not being hard. Pastor's being real, and he's being just, and he's telling you the truth, and one day you're not going to stand before me and say, why didn't you tell me this, Pastor? And we say, I did. You know what? Hit the video. Julio, get the video. Boom, put it on. There it is, and you're going to see this message. And God's going to say, he told you. He preached it to you. Could you imagine if the prodigal son's mother was sneaking on the side to go give her baby some food? After he had spent all his money, he, and guess what? All the friends are around you when you got money. They're ready, man. They're there to bless you. They're there to hang out with you. Hey, let's go here. Let's go. Oh, man, I tell you, I loved you. Oh, man, you're the boy who BFFs. Pinky swear. And that chick will be by your side because you're just buying her stuff. Right. And that dude will be right there and say, man, you know, I love you, girl. Shoot, I love you. You're my main squeeze when you got the money. But the moment you're broke, he's going to dog you. And this young man, after he spent everything, he had nothing. And the Bible says a great famine came. Who do you think put that famine there? Who do you think's been trying to starve your children out and your family out for all those years that you kept running and helping them out? We haven't been helping God. We've been hindering His work. Because we ran over there when our Hito was on the bus stop. We ran over there when he was hungry. We ran over there because we thought that was love. If it is, then this is a mistake. Because God, when He loves you, He allows you to go out. And, and, and if He has to cut you off for a time, He turned His back on His own Son for you. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And God was looking upon the cross, and He seen Jesus on that cross, and He was pouring out His wrath on Him for you and for your sins. If it pleased God to bruise his son, he said, man, put that crown, dig it in deep, hit him harder, hit him harder, because the people need to be forgiven. And once he was dead on that cross, or once he was about to die, the last part is, is that God the Father, who had always looked upon him, see, you think God looks on you even when you're in sin and doing your own way, and it's just merciful God. And there's coming a time where God, when it says you seek his face, and, and, and God turns, and he, he turns his back on you. And he did that on the cross. And Jesus said, I've known you for all these years. My God, my God, why have you turned your back on me? And if you realize it was for you that Jesus was pushed away, that Jesus was shunned from God the Father and literally went to hell for three days and three nights for you so you can go party, so you can go smoke your weed? What in the world, church? You guys think that weed's all right just because it's legal? So it's drinking. And how many people has it murdered and killed over the last 10 years? And now marijuana is legal and people are doing it so it's all right for our kids? What happened to the fear of God? What happened to the love of God in our hearts? Matthew 24, 12 says this. He says that because in, in the last days, because sin abounds, because iniquity abounds. Remember that word, iniquity, because it's the same word that Jesus said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. iniquity. 
He said, because iniquity abounds, because sin is everywhere, the love of most will grow cold. Most means what? A few? The majority of Christians will turn away from God. The love of God in your heart is going to get so cold. It's going to wax cold. It's going to get old. Because of and you're going to look just like the world. What was it, 2 Peter 3? In the last days, perilous times will come. Get that for me, brother, real quick. First, first, 2 Timothy 3, I think. I want you to look at the condition of the church. What translation do you have? New Living? Do you have a different one? Alex, do you have the message? I want her to read this because I want you to see this. This is the condition, not of the world. This is the condition of the church, of the body of Christ. He said, in the last days, remember I just told you, the love of many will wax cold. This is the condition that has waxed cold of Christians. Come and read it up. I think it's one, you know where to stop. We're having a form of God. Please don't be naive. There are difficult times ahead. As the end approaches, people are going to be self-absorbed, money-hungry, self-promoting, stuck-up, profane, contemptuous of parents, crude, coarse, dog-eat-dog, dog, unbending, slanderers, impulsively wild, savage, cynical, tre treacherous, ruthless, bloated windbags, addicted to lust, and allergic to God. They'll make a show of religion, but behind the scenes, they're animals. Stay clear of these people. Wow. They look religious. But inside they're ravenous wolves. They're animals inside. This was a, this was a, what he was talking about the church. Read it to me again one more time from right there. Don't be naive. There are difficult times ahead. Difficult times. Self-absorbed. Money-hungry. Self-promoting. Stuck-up. Profane. Contemptuous of parents. Not too Ruined. fast. Horse. Doggy. Dog. Unbending. Standards. Impulsively wild. Savage. Cynical. Treacherous. Ruthless. Loaded windbags. Okay. Addicted to lust and allergic to God. But these are Christians. These are people that go to youth group. These are people, listen, one of the things that said in there was you're disobedient to your parents. That's demonic. That is demonic. Come on, church. Remember the lady sister that my wife preached that the woman went after Jesus running and looking for him for days and days, searching for Jesus. Why? Because her what? daughter was possessed by a demon and we look at our children rebelling calling us bees and cussing and behind our back talking about us man i wonder if they've even thought of killing us right some of you don't even know your children have thought of murdering you yeah. <laughs> and you're naive they're demon possessed disobedient to parents slanderers talk about you with their friends right. you with me i remember the day we, we went to pits and my daughter was in pits and we went to see her do something bring her something and she was with her little group of friends and and, and i heard them we were behind them and they said man oh my mom's a bee and this and that and they started talking this and that my daughter was right there with them and that is the day we walked into the office and said we were withdrawing our daughter from this school the principal was a lesbian, the, come on now, I went on and on, the janitor was scheming on some little 12, 13 year old girl, and I looked, said, no, I, I can't have my children in this environment. We started our own school, we started our own church school, and took them out and began to minister to them, and they eventually graduated, the, old, the two oldest from our Christian school. But I said, you know what, I can't allow that, I can't allow that, and they didn't like it. They didn't like it at all. They thought they were prisoners. They thought they were held captive. They thought 
you know, we're, do, we're, we're the worst parents in the world, we're the meanest parents in the world, but do you know what their, their attitudes are today now that they have children and they're grown up and they're married and they have husband problems and all this stuff? Oh my goodness, they, they, they think their dad's the best thing since sliced bread. They love and respect their mother and they honor us and they bless us with their prayers and with their lives and everything. You with me? One time we were a curse, you know what I mean? And that's the way they're going to look at you. Jesus said if they, if they hate me, they're going to hate you. Your own children will hate you. Your own husbands will hate you for the gospel's sake. Men who loved and promised that they you know, cherish you and and they hate you now because of your faith in Christ. Because you do something inside of them. You make them feel guilty. And it's not you. It's the Holy Ghost. Because you want to be obedient. You want to go to church. And they think you're having an affair at the church. One man of Yehita. An old man. His wife was of Yehita. He said, man, are you sleeping with the pastor? I said, oh, dear Jesus, have mercy. But the things the devil puts in the minds of sinners... All they're doing is taking all my mom's money. Come on now. They're taking our money. They're do you know all, the, all you do is go to church. If you didn't go to church so much, then I then I would I would tell you lying devil. The devil would tell you anything. Haven't you guys ever seen that exorcist? You with me? I remember seeing that as a kid. But that lying devil looked and she would tell you whatever you wanted to hear. She'd whisper in your mother's voice. She'd whisper in the voice of your father or whoever it was. That devil is a liar. Yeah. He'll tell you. He'll tell your children. He'll tell your husband. He'll tell your wife things. Yeah. And they'll be all there about you. Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Why are you giving all your money? All you do is spend your time. If you wouldn't do that, I would do this. And I promise I would be good. And I would, you lying devil, you demon-possessed kid, I rebuke you in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You never thought you'd have to cast the devil out of your own children. Yeah. That woman came and said, Jesus, you do something. She fasted, she prayed, she went walking, running, finding him, searching. Could you imagine in Pueblo you had no cell phone, no car, no nothing, and you had to go find me somewhere? Where are you going to start? Let's say there is no cars, there is no phones, there's nothing. And all you got is those two Clementine number nines on your feet. <laughs> and you got to go find me somewhere in Colorado. <coughs> you with me? You say, forget it, I can't do nothing about it. That's our attitude. That's not love. Love does. Love's action. Love moves. Love says. Love pleads with. Love lets itself be crucified on the cross. And the sad part is, sometimes it's at the hands of your own family. They crucify you on that cross. We've put up with too much, church. We've allowed sin to come into our own homes. Come on now. We've allowed drugs, we've allowed alcohol, we've allowed sin, we've allowed stealers, we've allowed, come on now. Some of your family be stealing and asking, what did you need from the store? Because I'll get it for you if you just give me some money. Give me 10 bucks for that thing that's $30 and I'll do this for you. We'll allow thievery in our own homes. I'm not trying to make you feel bad, I'm trying to make you change this morning. To say, you know what, I'm never going to do that again. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Yeah. You cannot let the, let the, you know what I mean, people in your homes that are doing wrong and evil, you know what I mean, there comes a time you have to say, you know what, child, yeah. you're out of here. Right. Right. And sometimes we, we think love is letting, letting the drunks in, letting the drugs in, letting the, the rebellious devils in. Wow. Come on in, because the Bible says, and I want you to understand this morning what true love is. When Jesus said, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me drink. And a lot of times, get, get this right. You know what I mean? When it comes down to it, you know what I mean? It comes down to the nitty gritty. Brother, he wasn't talking about every transient and every person that's holding a sign saying, give me some money. I need gas so they can go smoke some coke. He wasn't talking about them. He was talking about his church. He was talking about his people. He said, because that was me. Jesus ain't a crack addict. That's right. So we feel like if we give that crack 
ahead that's asking for money, $20, we've done a good thing. And Pastor Ray said it one day. He said, no, you're stupid. Oh, Pastor, I gave this guy $29 for the bus ticket, he said. And man, he told me his whole story. And they're liars! The devil is a liar! They'll tell you right to their face. I lost my... One guy came in here and told me, sister. He came in here and told me my son was just killed. He was weeping, and I felt sorry. I'm hugging this guy, praying for him. He told me my son was murdered, my son was killed, he was run over by a car, and this and that, and you know, his funerals this week, and all this stuff, and I'm feeling, I'm, I'm like all jacked up for him. Lying devil was drunker than the skunk, don't even remember coming in here. Lying to me, telling me lie, wanting money and all this stuff. Hey, you know what I mean? I was calling Romero saying, when's that kid's funeral? Who is this kid? What, how can I have? They're like, there's nobody that died. The devil is a liar. That, that lady, that man asked that woman coming out of Walmart in Denver for, 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 for a bus ticket. And she thinks, man, I'm doing good. She pulled out $29 of her pocket and gave it to the man. And the man, you know, said, thank you so much. I'm going to go to my family. And then she said, I watched him, Pastor Ray. I watched him walk down to Walmart and walk over to the liquor store and go right in. And Pastor Ray said, that wasn't God, that was stupidity. He said, why don't you give me $29, he told her. Huh? There's a difference between, between what real, genuine love is. Jesus said, when you see me hungry, when you see me thirsty, when you see me naked, when you see me sick or in prison, you came unto me. He said, when you've done it to the least of these my brethren, brethren yeah. you've done it unto me. He's talking about the church. He's talking about your brothers and sisters in Christ. How could you see them hurting or going through something and not help? That's what love is. He said ministering to their needs. He didn't say love is going and finding every chance and give them all your money so they can go get high. So they can go drink on your $10. And you, you feel, well, I think I did a good thing. But you won't give God $10. Somebody turn that air on, please. Put on low or something. Come on, church. Huh? And that last day, he said, this wicked, wicked generation. I was walking yesterday, and I said, I don't understand it. I don't understand this. I said, when we, we legalized marijuana, we legalized homosexuals to be married. We, 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 I said, look around. I said, Is our, I told Julio, I said, Julio, are we going to turn into a, 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 to a, to a Las Vegas here? I don't know if you've ever walked the strip of Las Vegas, but now I'm seeing guys everywhere with their baskets open, you know, playing there in Walmart as you walk in. Yeah. And I thought, well, we have to make arrangements in two months in advance to get a bake sale. Yeah. But they walk in and open their guitars and start playing. Right. They're outside, they're standing there, they're, come on now, can't even go to your car, they're harassing you for money. Yeah. Uh huh? And everywhere you look, it's like, man, Sodom, you're looking two women holding hands in love. You look two men holding hands in love. And you walk and you're thinking, and what do our kids think? And are we accepting this? Are we just, you know what I mean? Are we just saying, oh, you know, well, that's just, that's life. What can we do? You know what I mean? But we don't pray. We're not saying, oh, God, come quickly, God. God, help us, Lord. God, don't bring judgment on this. He said, woe unto you, uh, uh, Chorazin, woe unto you. He said, man, it was better for, for Sodom and Gomorrah than it would be for you. Why? Because Jesus went there. His presence went there. He healed the sick. He cleansed the leper. He, he raised the dead. He did all the miracles that he's doing today. And people don't believe. He said, I'm going to have more mercy on Sodom and Gomorrah than on you. Those people who have been visited by the presence of God. I was thinking today, the love of God, when he wept over Jerusalem, just like a mother hen, he said, I wish to gather you like baby chicks. You don't think God loves these people? You don't think God loves every Christian that's fakers? And he said, you don't know how long I've longed to grab you like my children and hold you. He said, but I couldn't. 
Hmm? Right. You didn't believe in him. You wanted to do whatever you wanted to do. And we as Christians think that love is, uh, uh, you know, just whatever, you know, just overlooking like this. The, uh, you think God does that to your sin? If that's the case, then everybody's going to heaven like they're preaching. Just overlook the sin, don't see nothing, just see that God, they're my children, so, you know what I mean? Well, just go ahead. You don't realize that these are all God's children? You don't realize that, that, that hell's filled with God's children? Yeah. What makes you any better? What makes you think you can live a lukewarm life, haphazard life, and, and, and make heaven your home, and have a mansion? When you live lukewarm and you do whatever you want and you sin here and there and you don't care and then you figure out, I'll, I'll repent later anyway. And you think God's just going to be a stupid and just cover his eyes and just say, you know what, I love you, mijo. Mijo, I love you. Don't care what you're doing like we do. Is that true love? Is that real love? No. I know that's hard to swallow. It's hard to swallow that maybe one of your children will end up in hell. But what's even harder to swallow is that you didn't say nothing to them. My kids can never ever say, Daddy didn't tell us. My nephew Barry can never say that I wept and cried over letters and over his life and, and begged him and played, played with him to serve the Lord. This was like one of my sons. Only to go shoot dope and OD fall dead in his own room, in my room. You with me? It's not easy to say, man, you know, they're probably in hell today. Not easy, we all want to say amen, praise God. You know what I mean? I say it myself, maybe he's with the Lord, maybe he's in a better place, maybe God just went like this. You know what, I'm not going to remember all your sin and, and how you died, I'm not going to remember all that, I'm just going to overlook all that. I'm just going to, you know what I mean, because I love you and, and, and all this stuff, I'm not going to look over the years of sin and the drugs and the fornication and the, 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 the molestation and all this stuff, I'm just going to come on in to heaven. After, after what Jesus went through? After the beings, after all that? He's just like, nah, man, you know what? It's all right. If I was Jesus, I'd be like, what's up? You let me go through all that stuff and you're just letting them in? He said, there's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. If he's not your Lord and Savior, and you're not willing to raise your hand and say, yeah, he's my Lord and Savior, I'm telling you today, you're on your way to hell, and you better repent, you better change, because it's not easy, it's not fun, it's, it's hot, there's no fire extinguishers, and my wife says there's no ice water in hell. And there is no, time out, time out, it hurts too much. I, if you guys want to read it, go. I think we might even have a copy in the back. The Divine Revelation of Hell. Where he said, where this woman said, I've seen pastors, and I've seen Christians, I've seen leaders, and the man on the television, I've seen him, and they were in hell. And I seen the woman, she said, who went to church and who was talking and this and that. He said, I've seen her, the woman said, I've seen her in, a, in like a in like a bowl in the bosom of, of, of burning sulfur and ash and she was flesh was burning off of her and she was screaming and trying to get out and finally by the time she got to the edge of the bowl she's trying to get out and almost out when the demons ran up laughing and booted her back in to the belly of that bowl doesn't sound like a place I want to go and, I, and the thing is, is that we've been so desensitized, we don't even believe that, brother. Right? Right. I don't even know if we believe heaven's real. Right. But we really don't believe that there's a hell. If we did, we wouldn't be living the way we live. If we did, we'd be warning everybody we know and love. Love. Right. They're going to hell. God gave his son so you don't have to perish, to be lost, to be cut off, to be away from God. 
You gave Jesus to die on the cross to set you free from sin, not to compromise with sin. He died so that you can live with him forever, so that there will be no more tears and no more pain and streets of gold. Don't you want your family there? I mean, listen, I'm, I'm sorry for preaching, but it's who I am. I got a whole different message right here. You with me? But if you want to know the love of God, that's it. He came, his will is that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance means you're going with your friends, you're partying with your family, you're doing your drugs, maybe solo. Some of us like to do solo. We don't have to share, right? <laughs> right? <coughs> and you stop and you come to your senses and you say, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go down that wide road. He said, wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And everybody's on it. Yeah. All your friends, all your family's going that way. Uh. We're going that way and we snap and we come to our senses and we've been burned, we've OD'd, God brought us back. You know what I mean? How many times has he saved you? Yeah. And, and, and we're going that way and, and, and all of a sudden we snap and we say, I don't want to go that way no more. Uh. I don't want to do that. I don't want to destroy my family. Wow. I, I don't know about you, but I said, I don't want to die. I don't want to go to hell. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I want to be helped. I want to be healed. Wow. I, like, I kind of like my wife. Wow. <laughs> I like my kids. My, my Paulette was just like uh, Ruthie. Look at Ruthie. You see Paulette, the fat cheeks, and she looks sad all the time. Just droopy <laughs> little fat face. I said, I, want, I like my kids. I want, I want help. Right, is there anybody that can help me? Jesus said, here I am, son. Accept me. Turn away. All you got to do is turn away from that stuff. Turn away, yeah, but all the friends are still coming. All the family is still drinking. They're all doing their thing. And, and you know what I mean? But I had to make my mind up. I had to make a decision. If they want to go to hell, I love you, but go to hell. I'm going to heaven. If it's by myself, God gave me my family back. He gave me a ministry. He gave me a church. He said, come on, son, lead them the way I told you. Tell them what I told you. You had to do it, so do they. I'm going to heaven. I want to go to heaven. But you got to turn from your sin. Get rid of the phone. Get rid of the numbers. Get rid of the, 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 the friends. Get rid of the family members. I had to cut them off. We were at my Aunt Mary's every, every day. We partied every weekend there. But when I got saved and I started changing, I had to say, you know what? I can't go over there no more. And I love my Aunt Mary. And she knew I loved her, but I had to get away. Right. To save my family, to save myself, I had to get away. I went to my grandma, grandma Reese's house. Joe, everybody partying, man, that's all we did. And I had to make a decision right there, being tempted with the booze. I was saved, and I said, if I don't leave, I'm about to drink. And I know if I drink, I'm going to go to hell. I know I will die and go to hell. And I said, I don't want that. And I told my wife, I said, babe, let's leave. I said, could we leave? If, if we don't, I said, I'm telling you now. I don't know how I know, but I told her, if we don't leave now, I'm backsliding and things will never be the same. And she told me, get the kids. Come on, let's go. Let's leave this house. And we never went back other than to visit grandma when it was no drinking, no weekends. You with me? And I had to make a decision, and I had to tell my friends when they came honky, brother, and they came honky. Right. My friend Barney, have you ever heard me preach on Barney? Barney came honky, man. He had the, he was a handsome young man. Man, he, the lady loved him. He came with a car full of women, one in particular, and they're honking, and they're saying, he's like, dude, let's go. My girlfriend, my Susan, was behind me, and, she's, she, and, and, and I'm looking out the door, and, and he's right there, and all the girls and everything, and I'm thinking, you know, that was, a that, was a, that was a test. And I looked at him and I said, you know what? And I looked back and my wife was so broken from all the hurt and stuff that I've already put her through. And I said, you know what, brother? Don't you ever, don't you ever come back to my house like this again. 
I said, take them girls, get out of here. Don't ever come back here again. I don't want you back. Wow. And he left. Last time I seen him, he was dying on a bed from a shotgun blast or a, or a gunshot wound to his, under his nose from his own brother. His own father and brother planned his murder. It's the last time I seen him and I warned him because I loved him. I don't know about you, but I loved my friends. See, I don't know about you. Some of you are shallow. You don't love. You don't know what love is. You don't know what to love the brethren is. You know, you know this. I'll see you at church, and that's about it. But you don't know what true love is. You don't know the David Jonathan love, man, that's deeper than a love for a woman. And I loved my friend, and I warned him. I said, Barney, I said, if you don't give your life to Jesus, I said, God, you're going to die the same way you're, that guy you murdered died. And he looked at me, brother, he said, so be it, which means amen to your language. Which means, so be it unto me according to what you've said. And the last time I seen him was as the sun rose and, he, and they pronounced him dead. And, and God reminded me, I was looking at the sun. He said, son, didn't you warn him? I told you to warn him. Why did I warn him? Why did I cry for my friend when he died? Why did I pray for him and cry for him when he was dying? Because I loved him. And I said, man, Barney, if you can hear me, I said, repent of your sins. Man, I hope one day I get to heaven and he's waiting at them gates for me. Saying, brother, that last prayer you prayed for me, man, I gave my life to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And I watched him die as he flatlined there and God reminded me. And, and, and that man could never say he was never, he was never warned. You with me? Because I loved him. I loved my nephew and he died on me. And I preached at his funeral. I was one day too late. I was going to see him that night before and I, I said I had something else to do and I never made it and I was about to go the next day when Amber called. I said, little Barry, I OD'd. He OD'd and died. And I wept at my nephew's funeral and I said I was there one day too late. If I would have been there, maybe he wouldn't have died. If I would have been there that night, maybe he wouldn't have shot that stuff in his vein. I don't know, but I said, I, I was there one day too late. But I, but I warned him, I told him in the letters. I can go to his house and probably find the letters that he, I wrote to him. Barry, you need Jesus, brother. God, give your life to God. This is how over and over and over I warned him. And if he's in hell today, that was of his own choosing. I wasn't of it. I wasn't because I never preached and told him. I don't know if you, you love like that. Maybe we're different. But God loved us so much, He took a chance on us, killed His own boy, so that you can have eternal life. You with me? No greater love, Jesus says, has any man than this. Then He laid down His life for His friends. And he says, you are my friend. And he laid down his life. Now listen, I know, I know, I just said that in a general sense, but I want you to know, who is he talking to? His disciples. He didn't look at the Pharisee. Come on now. He didn't tell him, hey Pharisees, I died for you. Although he would give him a chance. Nicodemus was one, and eventually, hard-headed, God saved in the very end. So there's hope for anybody. Huh? But he was speaking to his beloved brethren, whom he loved. He loved so much. He said it in 1 Peter, and I wrote it down here, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Love each other deeply with all your hearts. One of them, uh, I think one of the translations said, uh, fervent love, let fervent love be in your heart for the brethren. Uh, you know what fervent means? Fervent translate in the, it is defined hot. Yeah. What did Jesus say? Let it either be what? Hot or cold. But do <coughs> not be lukewarm. You know what lukewarm means? Indifferent. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future's ours to see. Que sera, sera. Whatever. How many of you heard your kids say, whatever? How many of you have said, whatever? 
that's an indifferent spirit on you. Mm -hmm. How many know we don't want that? Amen. We want to be hot. I'm not telling you you're, 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 you're standing on corners or preaching to your children every day that they're going to burn in the fires of hell and all this stuff, but I'm telling you what, you better warn them. Yeah. And if I was you, if I was you, I would study. I would get that book, Divine Revelation of Hell. I'm not really trying to promote her, but there's a few of them. What is it, 29 minutes in hell? There's a few of them. You can go online on YouTube and watch that. You can go online and see but, uh, a scientist who have nothing to do with God just yeah. drilled down so deep. They went too far, and when they pulled that drill bit out so deep, heard screams of deep, screams of people coming and cries and wailings and weeping that made them the hair that it made them run for cover. Right. They went and covered that hole, and they didn't want nothing else to do with that hole. And it was the screams from hell. Right. And tell me it's not real, because it is. Yeah. Don't be caught dead without Jesus. Yeah. Give your life to Jesus. Amen. If you love your family, tell them the truth. Right. If they come in your house, they want to do their drugs, they want to drink. Listen, I had to tell family, don't you ever bring that drink to my house again. Amen. And you know what I did with it? When they left, I took it and I poured it all on my roses, man. All that Budweiser. I went, man, and it worked. They came out beautiful. That's what Budweiser's for, not for you. It's for plants. Put it on the plants. And I'm telling you what, man, I, I said, did you ever come to my house again with booze? You're not welcome here. You with me? Drugs, you're not welcome here. You with me? Oh, my son knows. My son knows. I, my, my dad loves me, but you, you never see me indignant. You never see me ri righteously angry. And, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll do it for the Lord. Not because I'm mean, not because I'm bad, not because I'm tough, because I love God and I hate sin, and I don't want that crap in my house. You get out of here. If you want to do that, don't you ever come over here again in my house and do that stuff. You say, that's mean, that's hard. No, that's tough love. The Bible says, cast out the flesh that their spirits may have a chance of being saved. That's what the prodigal son's father did. You tell them, you know what, you want to go out there in the world? I don't know who friends you're talking to. Yeah. I don't know what friends at school, what friends at the, the club, what friends at the gym, what friends at work you're talking to. But you want to go to the world? Go to the world. But you're not going to play games here. Yeah. Yeah. He threw that son out. Right. You with me? He said, I don't care, leave. Yeah. You with me? Didn't mean he didn't love him. But listen, they have to learn just like you have to learn. How is it that we've learned through the way we learned, but our kids are going to be grace and love into the yeah. kingdom? Right. It's not going to work that way. Right. You don't even understand what true grace is or true love is. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. It's heavy. Right. And the saddest thing is, is that one day God's going to, the God of love, because the Bible says in 1 John, God is love, that God will have to judge many. Jesus will have to judge many people and say, you know what? depart from me. And you know what the saddest thing in Matthew 25 is that he's going to just separate his church, the sheep from the goats. Those that did what Jesus asked them to do, those that had walked in that benevolence and that true charity of giving to this church and giving to those in need and those who kept back and said, I don't have to give anything, I'm not doing anything. Uh, they ain't going to tell me I don't love God because I don't give in the offering. They're going to be on the, on the right, the goats. And he's going to send you into outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Read it for yourself. If you love somebody, you'll tell them the truth. I take a chance every time I get up here and preach that one of you or ten of you or however many of you are going to be offended at what I'm saying and walk out of the church and never come back. But I'd rather do that and you leave a rebellion and God deal with you out here. One day you humbly crawl back in here and ask for forgiveness yeah. than for you to be sent to hell uh, and to be saying, my pastor never told me. You with me? Yep. See, I don't know if you came for a message or a massage. <laughs> I don't know if you come over here for a pastor can tickle your ears and tell you Jesus loves you and all this. Go ahead and just keep living the way you're living. It's all right. It's all good. 
God's a forgiving God. His mercy is new every morning. I didn't know if you came in here for the truth. If you did, you just got it. Right. Yeah. For it. Amen. God loves you. Your mom and dad love you. I think. I hope. I try. Change them, guys. I try and preach. If they don't change, man, you know what I mean? Maybe, I don't know. You with me? All I can do is tell them the truth. All I can do is tell them, love your children. All I can do is tell them is, are you with me? Treat them nice. How are they ever going to see Jesus if they see you mad and angry and upset and, 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 and all this? And you don't show them Jesus. You don't show them the kindness. You don't show them the tenderness of your heart. You don't show them the love you have for others. And son, he thought you got to give and you got to help. You got to serve. And if I don't show them how to be nice to my wife, if I'm beating my wife and hurting her and all this stuff, and then to come in and telling you, you got to love each other. And my kids see this. They're going to say, you know what, dad's nothing but a hypocrite. And I wish I could kill him myself because the way he treats my mother, I show him. I treat my wife like a queen. I love her because that's the only way I can show God I love Him. I love, I love the Lord. How? With what I'm saying? I'm telling God I love you? No. Check my wife. I love my wife. I love her like she was Jesus. And I thank God for her and I treat her like that. And I, I don't think I've ever told her to submit. I think she submitted willingly because she seen my great love for her. That's right. How can I say that I love God and, I, and I'm mean to my wife? Jesus said, if you're mean to your wife, you don't need, your prayers will not even be an answer. Right. He'll break you down to nothing. Wow. You with me? That's how I show God I love that. I love my children. I love my grand. I love you guys. Wow. You with me? That's how I show it. You with me? I don't treat you bad. I don't beat you up. I don't slap your face when you don't listen to me, do I? Then you don't do that to your children. Maybe maybe they don't want to serve the Lord because we've been bitter to them. We've made them angry. We've made them hard because of what we did. And we've not shown them the love of God. They ought to see it in you. You ought to be like God to them. They ought to look up and say, you know what? I want to honor my mom. I want to honor my dad. Because they love God with all their hearts and souls. Maybe they'd submit if we submitted to God. Amen. Think about that one. You with me? And, 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 and this is for free, okay? True love. And I know, I, I think somebody got in trouble for spanking their kid or something. Football yeah. player? I think he yeah. abused him, though. You with me? But true love, the Bible says, spare the rod, and you're going to spoil that child. Yeah. And when they're spoiled, don't you dare get mad at them for it. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to take for us. Yeah. You with me? To understand, this child needs a spanking. This child needs to be disciplined. And what, you, you with me? All we got to do is look at them and we can see us. All we do is look at their rebellion, their, their fit, their attitude, their crying, their, all this, and we look and see, gee, I created that monster. You with me? Who do we spank, guys? Who do we spank when we've done that? We've got to spank them. But who's disciplining you? I'm telling you, God will discipline you for the things you did. You with me? Because He loves you. And He will discipline you. And He requires you to discipline your children in love. Not abuse them, not beat them, not backhand them, not choke them, not, not, you with me? Kick them. In the, you with me? You with me? Yeah. But, to, but to take your bow to your little pile or whatever it is, Bend them over and we'll whack them buns, man. That's why God put that meat there. <laughs> That's right. I was, I was saying it last night. I said foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. But, but, but the rod of correction will, will, will drive it far from them. You do that, you won't have... We, come on now. Amen? 
My, my son will tell you, man, Dad, he'll be dead because I never hit my son. Man, you know what I mean? One time in his life, uh, he jumped on me, did something, and I was trying to spank him off me, and I hit him like that with the back of my hand and his butt, and I gave him a Charlie horse, and he'll tell you forever, my dad beat me. He punched me. I said, son, come on, now, how many times you get spanked? You know what I mean? I said, one time, you know what I mean, that you got punched in the butt, and he'll tell you that story like he was abused and this and that. I wasn't perfect, but I did my best to discipline my children. And when they didn't listen, the law will discipline them now. You with me? But they will be disciplined. You with me? And I can walk, I can wash my hands and I can go to sleep in peace. They could, you wanted that? That's what you want. But God, don't let them be in there for nothing. De de teach them. Teach them, Lord. Let them hate that place. Let them never want to go back to that place. Let them come out saying, you know what, I was going with all my friends and I went to prison, but now I'm going with, with, with the kingdom of God and with, with my mom and dad to church to serve God. <laughs> Amen? Because, you know, either way, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? We got to show that love of God, man. We got to have that love. Remember, it doesn't mean you're going out and giving all your money away to every person on the street that don't want it. You know what I mean? I understand that there's people that are that, that are really in need and that, that have no other choice, but the majority out there, they're scammers. They're drug addicts, and they're going to just take your money. I don't know why Pueblo hasn't raised up. I, I got all these big mouths in this city that, that write about everything, put in the paper about everything. I don't know. I don't read the paper. Maybe they have, but I haven't heard one person complain about all these transients and all these people on every corner and every parking lot. Yeah. I haven't heard one person. Yeah. And they got big mouths in this city. Yeah. All the Pueblo chieftain and all that, and I hope you listen to this. Yeah that write a bunch of junk and, and the wrong stuff for the gospel, but write a bunch of, you know what I mean? Promote the devil in this city on that paper, and not one big mouth has said anything about all these people. I just see them handing them more money. We got family members that are getting rich out there. Yeah. Uh, I'm standing on the corners. Yeah. I don't blame them, I blame society. That's right, that's why they do it. You with me? Yeah. That's not true love. Peter and John were going into the, in the into prayer in Acts chapter 3, and, and, and one of the guys said, Be Beggar, he's begging there, and he had a legitimate reason. He had no legs. You with me? And he was begging there, and, 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 and saying, you know, alms, 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 and they looked, and they said, man, you know, they looked on him, and the guy looked intently, like, what are you going to give us? And they looked and said, man, you know what, I, you know, I, mean, I, I don't carry cash. So I got a legitimate, I ain't got no cash, brother. Yeah. And if I do, I know where to go. Yeah. You with me? But they said silver and gold, and literally translated said, silver and gold, brother, is not what you need. Yeah. What you need in the name of Jesus, get up! Guy jumps up to his feet, legs, ankle bones, healed, and they said, now come on, let's go to church, and then we're going to get you some applications. Yeah. 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 Let him the stole steal no more. But let him get a job and labor with his hands that he might be the one to bless others. That's true love. You with me? Stand with me this morning. Man, you guys pulled a message out of me that I didn't even mean to preach. No, I did, man. I want to say what God has. But I'm telling you today, it's time for us to change. It's time for us to get real with God. And it's time for us to get our houses in order. It does depend the way your house runs. I remember growing, or even as pastors, growing and stuff. And You know what I mean? And I understand there's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. But even as pastors, you know what I mean? There's a young church and stuff growing. And man, we had the little, we had fives. We only got one or two, and you guys can't handle that. We had five little ones. Boom, 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 boom. I don't know how we did it, man. I have no patience no more for children. I love them for a second. It's like, go back with your mom. We babysit for a few hours. Our three, my son's three daughters, and they're like, ah! 
I don't know what to do. Sometimes my wife says, you just go stand over there, all right? <laughs> I'm just gonna stand over here and sit down and wait for you. I don't know. I ain't got no more patience. I just used it. You guys are taking the last of it. <laughs> but we raised five of them, man. And every single one of them, they at least graduated from, from high school. Every one of them. And almost every one of them serving the Lord today. The other one is, he just, he just don't know it yet. Amen. But they're coming in, they're coming sure. in. And one of these days my son's going to, I don't know if he's going to dress like Corey. Corey dresses really sharp. But my son more urban, kind of, you know, shirt out, jeans, and the, the, the Jordans, and the hat, you know what I mean? He's more like that, but one of these days you're gonna see him right here with his papa, right here standing with me. I'll be sharing. Right after you're gonna see Jonathan, and you're gonna see your, your sons, and Clemente, you're gonna see him in here, man, listening to him. So, hey man, preach it! <laughs> huh? Amen. Amen. God's an awesome God this morning. Amen. I wish we knew that song. You got to practice that song. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. But we have to, have to, have to do our best.